today I'll be talking about NTLTB, that is an open source database that we are building. Um, so before I start, just to give you a quick presentation of where we are coming. So we, we are at the uh, North University of Lisbon, that is in the other side of the river. So we are clo more, more or less here. So we are located in the other side of the river. The university is a, a quite big university with several schools, medical school, uh, science and technology, uh, law, the typical schools that you could think about in a university with more than 20,000 students. The, the science and technology uh, school has about 9,000 students. And uh, in our research center, the computing system research center, we are about 20 faculty plus postdocs. And we have about 20 PhD students and lots of of uh, master students always working with us. So the, the research center is, is divided in, in four areas, software systems, multimodal systems, computer systems, and knowledge-based systems. So we work in, at the computer, sy computer system. So the research center is a, is a broad research center addressing more or less most of the topics of, of computer systems. So today I will be talking a little bit of antidotes and also other CRD-related projects at Novel Links, just to give you points that if you want to talk with me after that, so uh, in the afternoon I will be, uh, I will be around. So, um, so we, we all know that geo-replication is easier to stay, and then there is a trade-off between consistency and availability. Uh, and if you look at the, the cloud storage that has been that has been created. If we see at the first wave of cloud storage, things like Cassandra and Hiac, basically these data storage were eventually consistent data stores, okay? Where you, basically you only have guarantees that data will converge in Cassandra, things would converge by last writer wins. Hiac improved on that. They, they, had, they had CRDTs with a, a little better semantics, but uh, still everything was eventual consistency. So if you look at the second wave of cloud storage, things like Cosmos DB, Spanner, Google Spanner, so it seems we moved completely to the other side of the spectrum and everyone wants to have strong consistency and uh, very, 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 uh, very strong guarantees on, on, uh, on, on your data. But providing these even, even on Spanner that can have uh, good throughput, uh, still, the, the latency is still high, and if, if, there is, if there is problems, if there is some uh, network uh, partitions, you still uh, may, may get blocked. So what is NTDOTB? Basically, NTDOTB is kind of our answer to this kind of uh, two-way spectrum. And what we are trying to answer is, is it possible to be I believe a little available and still provide strong semantics. And what do we mean by strong semantics? So that's what I, I, I will try to, to, to explain to you. So what are the strong semantics that we want? So let's think about of, of, of a banking application. So I had these slides already done, so I had not adapted. Uh, but you can think of the examples that were given here before. Um, so the, the first thing that we want in general in applications is that we want all replicas to converge. And of course, for these, we have the problem of concurrent updates. You all know about these. You can execute two operations concurrently. You, uh, you then have to decide what happens. And for solving these, basically, we are doing what everyone is doing, is we are using CRDT. So not, nothing specially here. So let's, let's look at things a little bit more complex. So in a banking, uh, in a, a banking application, if you only have transfers, we, we basically want that uh, the balance will be equal to the initial balance plus the deposits minus the, the withdrawals. Okay? So let's, let's look at what happens. So suppose we have two accounts, and A account starts with five, and a B account starts with one. Okay? And, um, and we start to see what is the balance of A plus B. The balance of A plus B is six, okay? We have five in one account, one in an account, so we have six. So 
Well, now suppose we, we want to transfer three from A to B, okay? Now comes what gets a little bit more complex. So if we have everything here in, in a DC and we can do security operations immediately, A will be with two and B will be with four, okay? Because we are transferring three from A to B. So the problem comes now because typically in these systems, uh, um, typically in these systems, I will have to execute two operations, one to update object A by decrementing three and another two to update object B for incrementing three. So, so wh what happens now if this operation arrives here and I update A, A now is two, B, B is still one, and, and uh, uh, what happens is, is that if now I try to see the balance between A and the A plus B, I get three. And I shouldn't get three because I'm doing a transfer, okay? So the balance should be still, when I, when I sum A plus B, I should have still six. But I don't, I have only three. I have this because I have been uh, executing the operation in the middle of two operations. And this is a problem that happens in many applications. Many applications you want to execute one operation that has to be divided into two operations and you don't want the state in the middle to be visible. So what, what is the solution that we have implemented for this? Basically, uh, our approach for, for this is to, to use something that we call I leave a load transactions, okay? There, there are other, other systems that do this and there are several protocols for, for doing this, but our database have what is called I leave a load transactions. What are the I leave a load transactions? Basically, they are transactions, okay, where when you read, you read from a consistent snapshot. When you execute a, a, a set of operations, all those operations are visible atomically or they are not visible. For example, here, when you execute these updates in this replica, these updates will only be visible after the second one is executed and not before. And this guarantees us that we see always a consistent state, okay? And this can be done, uh, can be done in a weakly consistent way. So we don't have to coordinate between, between, between data centers to do this, okay? So this is the, the first additional strong guarantee that we are giving. I live all the transactions. The, se the second one is, okay, so sometimes it seems that things disappear in the middle. So let me give you an example. So getting back to this example. So I've transferred three to A and B, okay? And I said, okay. And I'll suppose that the client see seen that the transfer has been done and decided to, to write in some other object, okay, I'm, I'm having here a log, but could be something more complex, so the transfer has been done. And this object is now replicated, okay? And in, in these weekly available systems, typically objects are synchronized per object. They, they, there is no global synchronization. Each object synchronizes itself. So this log object can be synchronized before these ones are synchronized. And now if a client comes and reads the log A and B, what, what will we be seeing? Basically seeing that the log says the transfer is done, but the values are still the initial values, okay? So how can we solve this? Basically we can solve this by enforcing causal consistency. Uh, and again, causal consistency can be enforced without without coordination between data centers, okay? And this gives also another set of, of, uh, of guarantees to, to the applications, okay? So finally, so the, the thing that sometimes seems that is the most complex, that is, so I have the account balance, this banking application, and I, and I don't want this account to be non-negative, okay? So let's suppose that we start with uh, an account at five, okay? And uh, if, if the first client withdraws three, 
In this replica, it seems everything is okay because A is still two. But if concurrently another replica withdraws, for example, four, okay, in this replica, it seems everything is fine because the value of A is still one, right? So everything seems to be okay. The problem comes when you, you, you synchronize. When you synchronize, basically, you'll see that the value would be minus two, okay? Because when you propagate the updates, you combine the two updates and you end up with minus two. So this seems, this seems a, a, a situation where, okay, in these cases, you really have to coordinate, right? Until now, you are giving more, more uh, guarantees, but you are not coordinating. But in this case, you, you, you need to coordinate. Yes, we need to coordinate, but we can move the coordination outside of the execution path in many cases. Okay? How can we do this? But basically, we can do this by, so suppose we have five, okay? And we pick this five, and we split this five between these two replicas. And we say that this first replica has three, and this second replica has two, okay? And this three, this replicant can use this three without coordinating with the other replica. This one can use this two without coordinating with the other replica. So if now I execute an, uh, an operation, the client one executes an operation to withdraw three, that's fine. I have three here that I can use. Okay? So I can decrement. I can say OK without coordinating with other replica. What happens if, the other, if, if when the other replica tries to withdraw four? Okay? I came here. I see that, that I only have two. And in this moment, I have two to coordinate with other replica. And I coordinate, I see that I cannot, there is no more available, and I will fail. What, what, is, uh, what is key here is that, uh, so this example, we are very close to, li to the limit. But if you think in, a, in an example where you start with, for example, 1,000, okay, and we divide this 500 in each one, you can execute lots of operations without having to coordinate. You only have to coordinate, really, when, when you are very close to the, to the limits. Okay? So we, we have published something that we call bounded counter CIDT that addresses this problem. Okay? So, and if, if you look at more or less at the, the performance that we get when you use this bounded counter, okay, most of the operations are very quick. Sometimes you have to coordinate, and then your time will be high. Okay? So, and we can also do other invariants. I will not go into details in the other invariants, but, uh, uh, but I, I can talk with, with you guys after if you want. So basically, we are building this anti.db database that is open source, that is at GitHub. It's a geo-replicated NoSQL database that, is, that has these high-level transactions, CRDTs for conversions, causal consistency, bounded counter for enfor enforcing numeric invariants, and we are building an, an, a, SQL in, a SQL interface that enforces SQL in invariants automatically on the database. The, we have a preliminary version also at GitHub for, for those that want to, to, to try. Okay? So, before I finish, I will just give you a quick overview of other CRDT-related projects that, are, that we are running at, uh, at Novalinx. So one of them is something that we are calling non-uniform CRDTs or non-uniform replication. So basically, in, the, in this work, we are trying to, to answer this question. So when we think about replication, it seems that all replicas will have to have the same state. If even if the internal representation is different, the overall state seems to, be the, seems to be always the same. But is this necessary? And the, the answer is no. Think, for example, of about a, a leaderboard. If you want to maintain a leaderboard, and you only want to show the 10 first positions, why, why do you need to have the all list in all replicas? You don't. Okay? So this is something that we are building. We have also uh, versions of CRDTs for, for these, these kind of things at, at GitHub. There is a paper that you can, can read it. 
The, the second thing that we are working on is this privacy privacy preserving CRDTs. So the, answer, the question that we are trying to answer here is, so suppose that you, you, do, not, you do not trust the servers. You want, you want to, to, to keep the data okay, private, even if, they, if it is stored in, in, in the servers. Okay? Can, can we build CRDTs that we can execute operations, they can merge, they can, uh, they, they can uh, execute new operations, but all data is, uh, is, is kept uh, ciphered. And basically, we are building these privacy preserving CRDTs. We are using two, two basic approach, one using cryptographic functions. For, for some CRDTs, we need homomorphic functions. For others, we don't need. We, we, we can use things that are much, much lighter. And we are using trust execution environments, such as in Intel SGCs. They are basically two, two lines of, 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 of uh, approaches for, for addressing this. So the next uh, project that we are working is so having CRDTs with multiple semantics. Okay, so what is the, the problem? So if, if you all know about CRDTs, when you have a set, you can, you, when you build an application, you can have an add win set or a remove win set. But sometimes in some applications, I wanted that this operation to be add wins and this operation to be remove wins. And there is no way of doing this. And so we are kind of addressing this. We have, uh, we have designed CRDTs for sets that have both, uh, both add wins and, and remove wins, okay? And we are trying to de design CRDTs that are generic so that the programmer can specify what is the policy with each operation, okay? When he submits the operation, he says, I, I want my operation to be add wins and this one is remove wins. So the, it's, it's a bit more complex that, than, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a bit trickier, but, uh, but this is the, the key idea. So, Next one, this, this in part is something that we have not done, but as you, you guys are interested on this, I've, I've added a slide on this, that is the problem of access control and weak consistency. This, is, this part has been work, has, is work that has been done by Annette Bienuse and Matthias Weber. Uh, and basically they have been trying to address the problem of, of having access control when you have e uh, eventual consistency systems. So what, what is the problem? So the problem is that uh, there are basically uh, there are two problems. The first problem is that you can modify the access control rules concurrently. So you have to merge those access control rules. So for, for this, we, they, they have designed a CRDT that maintains access control rules and merges the access control rules. The second problem is then the interaction between the access control rules and the operations that are executed in the, in the object. Because you might be executing an operation to revoke the access to an object and concurrently someone is accessing th that object. So basically they, 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 have, this, they have designed uh, a, a protocol to, to address this. The, this one was implemented on Antidote, so they have the transactions and all those things that would help a lot, okay? We are basically currently working also on this problem, but and on the problem of cheating in Legion. What is Legion? So basically, Legion is a JavaScript framework for building extended web applications. Okay, that uh, that has a library of CRDTs, something that we call Delta CRDTs, but it's not. They, they're more more or less is uh, close to Delta CRDTs, but they have a, a, a small a small difference. Um, and you, 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 you guys can, uh, can access to Legion. So we have a web page where, we have a, where, where you have a demo, okay? So these, 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 uh, these clients have here CRDTs. Uh, I think it's, just, it's visible like that. Uh, so the, the clients in the web browsers connect via WebRTC, and basically you can execute concurrent operations and, and merge 
And we have here this demo. And let me get back to my presentation. Um, so this, this, uh, this is a, we have a library of this CRDTs in, in JavaScript. So th this might be interesting for, for Pedro. And something that Pedro uh, mentioned th that is about the versions of CRDTs and how, how can you know who has done what. So we have worked a little bit on that. So I've just added this just before the, the presentation as I was seeing the Pedro's presentation. So for example, Swift Cloud. In Swift Cloud, we have CRDTs where you can basically go in the, into the CRDTs and ask for a, a given version of the CRDT or check all the operations that were given by some, uh, some uh, client. And so we have, we have worked a little bit on that. So, and with this, I finish my presentation. Don't know if there is any questions. If not, I will be. Yes. I was going to ask uh, more about the privacy preserving CRDTs. Yes. Uh, do you have any work published on that? Yeah. No, we we don't have any. Uh, we we don't have any work published. We have. Um, uh, so we are writing a, a paper for this Portuguese conference that is a, a kind of uh, first take on what is our status, but. I will be happy to, to talk about what we've been doing. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to ask more questions about it. Uh, one thing that I was going to start with was, <clears throat> are, do you need fully homomorphic encryption for it? Or what are you trying to do that, like, what tools are you using that aren't fully homomorphic? So for example, Can I ask you to repeat the question so, that I get to so, uh, so basically, the, the question is whether we need full homomorphic uh, um, encryption or if we can use something that is lighter than full homomorphic. And the answer is that for, for some data types, we can use, we, we might not use fully homomorphic, for example, for sets. If you want to have, kind, instead of having a deterministic set, you, you are good with a probabilistic set with a very low probability, for example, you can use a Bloom filter for, for recording the, the elements. And that, that's, 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 that's enough, for example, for a set. Okay. For, for others, uh, for others, it's stickier, okay? <laughs> sure. uh, the causal preservation through uh, and, and being able to, uh, I guess. Uh, so in the, in, is this working? Yeah. All right, great. Uh, so in the, Causal link uh, structure uh, is great. It reminded me of like the the cat um, the causal uh, chains in transports done a, a long time ago, which it was a great line of research. Um, I, I'm curious as to uh, what happens when when some of these uh, so a lot of the CRDG settings are a few replicas and and, and clients. Uh, we're evaluating settings where we have like millions of. <laughs> Of replicas because we want like uh, client-oriented things, um, and those causal chains get really messy. So, uh, curious if you've evaluated those kinds of settings, or are most of the settings kind of you know low-bounded uh, replicas numbers. So we 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 do not bound on the number of, of clients. We can have as many clients as you want, but uh, in our in our approach, we assume that there is a, a, a server. And in that work with causal, basically we have two works on causal. This one that I presented, we assume that there is a, um, a backbone and all the clients uh, synchronize through the, through the backbone. Okay? Mm -hmm. The backbone is as multiple replicas, multiple servers, but uh, there is a st still a backbone with a limited number of clients, uh, of, of, of replicas. But the number of clients can be as, as many uh, as you want. So we are, we, we, we are, we, we have other work where we, uh, we assume that the number, the, the clients can synchronize uh, directly. And for, for, for those, basically we build trees for keeping uh, causality. Mm -hmm. I can, I can talk more on details about that with you. Okay, thanks.